And welcome inside the Backstage Pass here, powered by the SportsGuysPodcast.com. Always live and just in living color here, which is great, too, as well. We don't need any more black and white, too, especially on a TGIF Friday here. Thank God it's Friday and looking forward to getting out of town this weekend, doing some fun stuff with the family. Hope you guys had a great Earth Day out there. Happy Earth Day to everybody out there. I saw a bunch of people uh, with some cool photos out there celebrating Earth Day, either hiking or doing something with nature, so it's always Cool to see that um, take place, no doubt here. Brandon Morrell back here with the best in the business, no doubt. I see two ladies hanging out with two beautiful ladies and good at what they do. Uh, Kirsty Krause here and pleased to welcome in our guest presented by Bangtail Whiskey, our good friends at MitchMax.com and of course Hank Jr. Productions. We got to see her at an event in Nashville and now she's back here on the show uh, with us. So great to meet her in person and be able to give her a true hug again. We can actually touch people now that COVID is dying down. Alexandra K back on the program. Miss K, how are you doing? I'm doing good. How are you? Oh, we're doing fantastic. Nice. I love the yeah. Earth Day thing, Kirsty. On yes. the yes, it is. Our, <laughs> so it is so good to have you back, Alexandra. Let's for people who are tuning in on this interview. Let's start where it kind of all became faster. Not that you were not doing. Under, you know, the overnight success thing. All these things happened before, but then all of a sudden TikTok came around. And then right. how'd you join the 615? Like, talk to us through that. And just as you're making content, being like, oh my gosh, this is working. Like, I am gaining people that I would never be able to see my stuff and it's working. So just talk to us about that. You know, the TikTok thing was so new to me as it was that, you know, everybody who, who first started it, whenever you start to realize, can we promote our music through this? Like, I know people are saying we can, but like, will it work? Will it look kind of goofy? Because it's a lot of kids <laughs> just like dancing on this app. Like, is this a real thing that's going to affect the music business? And those were all my thoughts whenever I was sitting in a write um, with a couple of friends and it was, we were actually writing, I kind of don't. We were fish, finishing mm -hmm. my first single, I kind of don't. Um, which is my first single from that really new era of music and the first one I put on TikTok. And so we were finishing it and my friend Ryan was like, have you guys heard of TikTok? And I was like, isn't that like a kid's app? And he was like, he's like, I mean, it was like a dancing app, but it's, it's much different now. Like I have friends that are posting their music and going viral, like crazy. Like the algorithm is nuts. And I was just like, okay, I mean, it's worth a try. So I started posting just cover videos and you know, slowly, very slowly gained like little to no followers. I mean, but it was very, very slow. And I was just doing my normal acoustic singing cover sing. And then um, I decided I was going to post, I kind of don't and kind of mm -hmm. tell my story about how I was signed to a major record deal and was on a Netflix TV show. And they really had a full idea of who they wanted me to be as an artist, but weren't really open to hearing who I am and who I want to be. And so I had to make the decision to leave and I took my songs with me and, and, uh, and so I decided I'm just going to upload my songs to this app and see what happens. And it was my first number one song on iTunes. It was my first song to ever chart on billboard completely independently and uh, all thanks to the fans. And then, you know, through that Thomas Mack and I were really good friends. He had actually opened for me at a show in Florida and so mm -hmm. Thomas Mack joined 615 House and he would talk to me about it all the time. And I'd be like, I want to get in there. And uh, I was like, introduce me. <laughs> and so he introduced me to Chris Ruger and, and I joined the, the cast of nine. So still best friends with all of them. Still see them all the time. <laughs> still make videos together. Yes. And one of the things that really people would see on TikTok was your videos with the coffee and singing. Yeah. How particularly are you with your coffee? Let's just get that out of the way. <laughs> you, have your, you have your routine down, right? Like, I do. I really do. You know, and I change it up. Like sometimes it is people give me crap all the time on TikTok where they're just like, you just drink milk. Like there's no coffee in there. And I'm like, I went through a phase of loving iced vanilla lattes. Like that's what, when I lived in LA, I had a Starbucks right next to my place. And every single morning, I would get a spicy chorizo sandwich and an ice vanilla latte. <laughs> well, uh, I, I was getting, like, real milk and not sugar-free syrup. So, like, you know, it was, like, just became that really bad breakfast sandwich and that really big sugary coffee every morning. 
uh, I was like, I need to figure out a way to make this at home so I can feel better. <laughs> and yeah. so uh, it doesn't cost me an arm and a leg every single morning. So I went home and I, my, actually my mother-in-law gave me that espresso maker, like with the little bitty cup when I started mm-hmm. the coffee covers with the little cup. So that was like two shots of espresso. Oh, and I was just nice. making like lattes with like, you yeah. know, oat milk at the house and sugar free syrup. <laughs> and everybody thought that the syrup was vodka. And then everybody was like, are you drinking in the mornings? And some people were like, hell yeah. Like, like <laughs> it just really sparked the conversation in the comments. And then before I knew it, it was like one viral video after the next, after the next, after the next. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and yeah, and I just kept going. It's crazy how that happened. It it is crazy. Hey, take me back to 2020 before all, I guess, the madness was going on and and everything affected us like we never thought it was going to affect before. All the Cowboys comes out in 2020, and I love that song. Love what it did for you. Talk about something that went viral again. How was that one born? Because I really, man, y'all put a stamp on that song, girl. Thank you. Thank you. Um, All the Cowboys is really special to me because one of my best friends, she was going through just some trouble, like, finding her person and we had had a conversation the night before just like over wine as girls talking about it and she was really struggling and being like i don't understand why i'm not finding you know every guy i date just nothing ends up working out and like she's at the age and and in the point of her life where she's trying to settle down and uh it really hit her and so i that night or was it the next night that I was just really thinking about it and it like woke me up in the middle of the night and I was like so I just got up to say a prayer for her and I did and in the middle of that prayer I just started to get this story in my head so I grabbed my guitar and I mean it was like probably three o'clock in the morning four o'clock in the morning in the middle of the night and I grabbed my guitar and I went into the living room and I started the whole song with hey mama like a conversation with her mom at the end of a day and and really unloading all of these emotions um to the person that she loves the most and confides in the most and what does that sound like and so i brought the idea i had the first verse in the chorus done i brought the idea into uh, matt Wynn and andrew capra and mm-hmm. matt Wynn changed it to the why do I like that that why that was not there when I brought it in. Mm-hmm. It was like yeah. way less cool than that. <laughs> and so Matt was like, oh what if it did this? And I was like, yes. Mm-hmm. And we were off to the races and and that ended up being back to back. I had back to back number one songs on iTunes, which is a very, very and nobody nobody was doing it at that time. Like the only other person who had done that as an independent artist was Priscilla Block. Mm-hmm. And so I kind of don't was the second one to do it. And then the third was all the Cowboys. So it's a very crazy time in my life. And of course, you know, the record label started coming out of the woodwork and I was having meetings left and right and um, ended up deciding I wanted to stay independent. So that's where we're at. So, I love it too. It's a yeah. great story. Believing in yourself. I love <clears throat> that because mm-hmm. clearly we have so much to talk about. On this interview, <laughs> before we get into all the cool stuff that's happening, I want to talk to you about how do we go because that song spoke to me the most. Are you like, as far as reactions of people, I feel like that song just just hit me. And talk to us about writing that with Matt Wynn and, and Lizzie Cates and and that being born the song. Oh man, how do we go? I, I I feel like I say this all the time because I'm like, oh, it's one of my favorite songs I've ever written, and I'm like because. I, I really, I, I'm very picky about what songs I release. I've written thousands of songs. <laughs> um, and I'm very, very particular on what I release at what time. And is it ready? And if it's not completely ready, I've cut songs and I have a release date and everything. And I put it into my car. I go in my car and I, I listen to it on the car speakers. And I'm like, no, it's not ready. And we pull everything until it is. Um, And so how do we go? I came up with that concept. I was like sitting in the bathtub one night and I was just like doing my thing where I'm just unloading my brain on my phone and, and uh, started to think of, of just kind of the, the back and forth in, um, 
I'm sorry. I was like, what, what is happening there? And I realized <laughs> I'm doing yard work outside the window. Oh. <laughs> um, uh, and, and I just started to kind of think about that, that thought of saying like, how did we get here? How did we get to this crossroad kind of when we used to be so good and how yeah. do we get back to being good again? That was the like very in layman's terms concept that my brain had. And I was mm -hmm. playing around with a whole bunch of different ways on how to say it. And, you know, one of my favorite songs um, is a Chris Stapleton song. Uh, and I think it's either way. And mm -hmm. that song cuts me to the core and the story of being strangers in a household. And when we went in, that was basically exactly what I said to them is, is, you know, I love this thought of two strangers in a house and one person willing to give it everything that they have and the other person ready to go. And, and when it comes down to let's make this decision right now, are we, are we doing this together? Are we leaving apart? And, and uh, that's how we wrote it. And then we wrote that song into it until one, one or two o'clock in the morning. And I had another right. I think it took us like seven hours to write that song. Um, and I had a, uh, I had a write that night. So I, I black out, I, I always block out four hour sessions. So mm -hmm. I'll do, sometimes I'll write three times a day. It's four hours each time. And then I'll go to the next. Well, I had another session four hours later and we were at four hours and I was like, we cannot leave this song. And so I canceled mm -hmm. my next write and we wrote until 7 a.m. <laughs> and we finished it. Um, and I knew it was special from the minute that we wrote it. Well, I, I know another one that was special for, for me and, of course, a lot of people out there, too, at the same time was continuing that theme of 2021 with the How Do We Go was Tall Boys. So I've got to get the story <laughs> of Tall Boys, how much fun this was, uh, one of those kind of songs to put out there and just let people have fun and enjoy it. And we get the, the, the mention of it from the photo you put out there with. I thought the photo was very catchy on, on the single itself, too, at the same time. So, Jared Brock, thank you for uh, tuning in, too. And everybody who's tuning in, great crowd, Don. And uh, Thanks, Elaine and everybody, appreciate you guys tuning in. So if you have questions, be sure and ask them. But take me through the making of Tall Boys. And was that an easy ride? <sighs> <She's> <laughs> I'm like, was it? I don't think it... Actually, I think we wrote Tall Boys pretty quick. Okay. Um, fairly quickly. I am not in everybody who's kind of on my writing, like, in my writing community writes with me all the time they know my producer they know you don't you don't get a song in one in one session mm -hmm. with AK. <laughs> it usually takes two or three because i'm very very particular on the lines mm -hmm. um and it's got to have a story it's got to come full circle and it's got to really move the listener and i'll change a line 15 times and i don't care if we write if we come in and all we got was a concept but it's an awesome concept in those hours, I'm fine with it. And then we get another one and then we come in. And if all we get in that is a bad ass chorus, mm -hmm. I'm fine with it. You know, I don't need to, I'm not the kind of songwriter that needs to just turn, turn things around like this, like this, like this, which is why I don't have a publishing deal. Mm -hmm. And I've done that on purpose because I'm not the kind of writer that wants to sit in a room and just come up with a bunch of random words and throw them together and be like, this is a cool truck song. Can I have my check, please? You know what I'm saying? Like, that's, it's just not, it's not why I fell in love with country music and it's not how I do things. And so, so when we went into, uh, to the right for Tall Boys, me, Mary Cutter and Andrew Capra, who is my producer. And Andrew is in pretty much every right for this album. He is actually, he's, he co-wrote every song on the album and is in every single session. And, and I kind of told him, I said, I want to, I sat him down and I was like, Hey, like, I want to do this record together. It's my first independent record and, and I love you and you, you get it, you get my vision. And he's like my, my ride or die. And so it's me and him on this album. And I can't wait to one day accept an award with him for it. And I can't wait for you guys to hear it. But, but, um, so we sat down, me, yes. Andrew and Mary, and we were talking, um, about party songs, plain mm -hmm. and simple. And I was telling them how it's so hard for me to write a party song because, I can't stand cliche lyrics mm -hmm. yeah. like the normal, you know, beers, trucks, women. I, I can't stand it. And so I was like, man, if we're going to do this, we've got to do it in a catchy way. Mm -hmm. 
I said, we've got to take it the 90s and early 2000s route, you know, and and really make it rock. And they were like, all right. And I was like, you know, how do we start it? And I was like, we just got off work. Where are we going to go? We're going to go have mm-hmm. after work drinks. And that's we just rolled right into it. And then we started doing somebody said something about I think I said something about a tall boy in my hands. <laughs> And then, you know, somebody said something about tall boys and I was like, you can find me with the tall boys drinking tall boys. And they were like, let's go. And we were off. <laughs> Love how it's, it comes it together. It is super fun. Yeah. So your most recent single that came out March 11th, which is amazing. You got pulled into it to do a duet. And I have to say, I remember going on that Friday and listening to listening down to everybody who released music. And I was like, Oh my God, this is so hot. And I shared it on my story and I was like, this is so relatable. (laughs) I've been there and you guys smashed it out of the park. And so, yeah, when you talked to us about being approached to do that, did you know Julia before? Yes. How did it work? Okay. Yes. So I, I knew Julia before. We're definitely much closer now. We weren't, we were just kind of acquaintances then. Um, but we well, now you get to work together. So it's easier to be like friends, if that makes sense. Oh yeah. A little bit. Yeah. yeah. 100%. And like we, you know, we knew each other, but we, and we'd met a couple of times, but we had never, Oh, you know what? We wrote a song together. That's how it came out. That's how it came about. So we had a right and that was our first time ever meeting in person, I believe. But we mm-hmm. had, you know, we follow each other and support each other as we do, you know, all the women in country music and men as well. But like, you know, like we really, I think the women in country music really stick together and, and we understand what we all go through in this business. Um, and so we supported each other that way, like on socials. And so then we get in, we're writing a, a completely different song. And she tells me, she's like, would you ever be interested in doing a duet? And I was like, sure, you know, if the song makes sense of course. And so she showed me, or no, she said, I wrote this song with Josh Ronan and Rachel Wamick, who's incredible. Mm -hmm. And, um, it didn't make sense for Rachel to, to record it and release it, um, at where she was in her deal at the time. And so she was like, I'm going to send it to you. You just listen. And I put it on in the car on the way home from the right. And I was like, Holy crap. I have to be, I have to be on the song. And I showed it to my husband and he was like, obsessed he listened to the demo over and over and over he's like this is so good and he's like this is nothing like this isn't like anything you have and i was like for sure so went in cut the song and uh i'm just so so grateful to be a part of it the content creation around that song was so much fun so in cool. hair brushes right oh, like in the- <laughs> yeah, actually i was wearing i was literally wearing this in the video nice um but, but uh you know, and we got to work with her team who was super incredible and our teams kind of meshed together to, to make it a really successful release. The fans blew it up, which is all that really needs to happen anymore. And, and they loved it. And then, you know, we're super proud for it to be both of our first songs on Series X and the highway. So we are yes. just really, really pumped about it and shout out to them. Shout out to JR and uh, Stormy and everybody at the highway for, for giving it a chance because it's really cool to turn it on, turn on the radio on a Sunday and to hear that song blasted for sure. Yeah. That's a damn good song. Like I said, it fits you Dang. so well, and people should be she's excited about that. Real take a quick break here. More with uh, Alexandra Kay here on the Backstage Pass. Again, a word from Bank Till Whiskey and our good friends over at Mitch Max. I'm going to come back, and I love, you know, it's never too early to talk Christmas music. So I'm going to talk about Hard Candy Christmas and Santa Claus is Coming to Town. And it featured some amazing people in there. A couple of them we actually got to talk to at CRS when we were there at the Omni Hotel, that being Aaron Kinsey and Cooper Allen, Mm -hmm. which is fantastic artists in their own right. So more with Alexander here on the show. Don't go anywhere. Good crowd tune in. If you have questions, leave them in the comment box. Right now, word from Bangtail Whiskey and our good friends over at Mitch Max. Hang tight. More with AK here on the Backstage Pass. Stay tuned. The Bangtail Pour is comprised of a sweet corn mash base. The front has a subtle sweetness and not too sharp. It has notes of a medium char or white oak for a smoky flavor in the middle. And the tail has a super smooth and warm finish.
Go behind the scenes with some of the biggest artists in music today with the Backstage Pass, powered by the SportsGuysPodcast.com. Join Brandon Morrill and his co-host Kirsty Krause as they talk to rising stars and legends about their music careers. Listen to their latest tracks and learn fun facts about the men and women behind the music you love. And be sure to tune into the Backstage Pass Monday through Friday from 3 to 6.30, powered by the SportsGuysPodcast.com. And welcome in to the Backstage Pass... And here every week, Monday through Friday, between those hours of 3.30 and 6.30. Uh, Good shows coming up next week. Pete Agnew of the rock band Nazareth, a Scottish rock band there. Remember that song, Love Hurts? We get to talk about Pete and some of those road stories out there in the big tour. A big album they had coming out called Surviving the Law, which came out April 15th, I believe. So we'll talk about about Pete and about the band and how things are going coming up next week, too, here on the Backstage Pass. So i got to ask you about this. Back here with AK and Kirsty Krause here on the show. Uh, This beautiful Christmas music you put out. Hard Candy Christmas back in 2020. I remember you were talking about that in Nashville. We were there. And then you always love Christmas because you put out a just collection of people talking about collaboration. Santa Claus is coming to town with Cooper Allen, Aaron Kenzie, yourself, and just uh, Chris Rudiger. So many great people. So both works are a little bit different, but both really bring the Christmas spirit out there. I absolutely love Christmas. I'm a Christmas nut. <laughs> my husband proposed to me at the um, Anheuser-Busch Brewery Lights. It's like a huge Christmas light. They basically just spend thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars, and they deck out the entire Anheuser-Busch Brewery in St. Louis, which is where we're from, um, in Christmas lights. And it's just so Christmassy, and you go and you ice skate, and it's like my favorite thing to do every single year. And so my husband proposed to me there because he knows how much <laughs> I love Christmas. Um and so, yeah, uh, I obviously am a huge fan of Dolly Parton as well. And mm-hmm. Hard Candy Christmas is just one of my favorite Christmas songs. It's not even a Christmas song. <laughs> it's in Best Little Warehouse. It's not an, actually even a Christmas song, but obviously the fans kind of took it and made it a Christmas song. And it's one of my favorite songs to play and sing during the holidays, as well as Santa Claus is Coming to Town. And of course, getting to collab. Anytime I get to collaborate with my friends at 615 House, I'm in. <laughs> Uh, the best group of people. And it's just, you know, when you're having fun, it doesn't even feel like you're working. And so <laughs> any chance I get to do anything with those cats, I'm, I'm in. So that's the way I feel with Kirsty every day doing this show when you're not, yeah. just, it's not working. It's yeah. just having fun. That's the, <laughs> love that too. Don is a good comment. Yeah. I have to agree with this one too. Put that up there. Put that oh, up there again. Yes. Like yeah, virtual Christmas shows. Yeah. I, I, yes. Yes. We did. Hi, Don. <laughs> uh, I just sent your t-shirt out like yesterday, or, oh, days ago. Um, <laughs> uh, so we, we decided, I believe it was last two years ago, two, two Christmases ago. We did Thomas Mack and I did this spectacular Christmas special um, in which we dressed an entire set in Christmas everything and Thomas wore a tux and I wore like a bright red dress and it was very formal and and we did a virtual Christmas um, with all the fans mm-hmm. and, and sold like virtual tickets and it was so so fun. That's cool. Love it too. Good stuff. I'm gonna go back to another single because everything you put out there has been on my playlist ever since you put it out there and it just kept building and my little girl's dancing to it now. She loves your music every day. Oh. It's like AK, AK, AK. I'm like, keep saying it, girl. Keep practicing. Yes. We'll get to Alexandra at some point when the words start to make two or three <laughs> word sentences and we'll get all the semantics put out there. Uh, we wouldn't be us back to 2021. Uh, special song for, for me, the album cover, fell in love with the whole thing. Uh, another one had to be fun to make too, right? Oh my gosh, so much fun. Um, we Wouldn't Be Us is my opening song in my set every night. And it's really, really cool because like it does this like weird echoey, like, ah, <laughs> like it's really cool. It's opening my Tim McGraw set as well. Um, it's it's one of my favorite songs to perform on stage and the crowd loves it. It's like so cool to come out every single night and just see everybody singing it. It's like my favorite moment. I love that song. <laughs> and I wrote it about my husband. So yeah. <laughs> That's the vibe I got too, no doubt was about it's special. Was about <laughs> significant other, no doubt. <laughs> So, yeah, I mean, you you touched on this, being on the road in these live shows, being able to be an opener for Tim McGraw on a run and meeting him the first time. We kind of saw some video clips. What was going through your mind in that moment when you're like, hi, 
you're right there. <laughs> I agree. <laughs> I was like, well, first of all, I'm a, I'm also a big fan of Russell Dickerson. And mm-hmm. so I, and I have seen many shows of his and I have gone to see shows just because he was opening mm-hmm. for no other reason. And so I'm, I'm a really big fan of him. And, and so we walked into the house that we were shooting the content at and we were all doing our COVID tests um, before we went out up and and uh, Russell was standing right next to me, you know, doing his whatever. And we're just like all sitting here with our managers and everybody's just talking like normal people. And I'm just looking up at him like. I've seen you perform so many times. It's so weird to just be here. Like, Hey, I'm Russell. Like nice. And he's a hugger. Like this comes in for a hug. And I'm just like, awesome. yeah. so weird. And I told him a story about how, um, one time I went to one of his shows and I obviously had friends at the radio station. I had bought green seats, lawn seats. And, mm-hmm. uh, and then I got upgraded by a friend of mine at the radio station who had extra seats. And so I ended, we ended up getting put right behind Russell's parents. Wow. And I realized it was Russell's parents because his wife Kaylee came up and was handing them wristbands and things. Mm. And so I, and so I, uh, I was, um, I leaned over and I was just like, Hey guys, uh, is Russell your son? Are you guys related? And they're like, yeah, that's my son. And like, his mom was so proud. And he was like, <laughs> I was like, Oh, we're, we're just such big fans. Like we're literally here just to see him. And they were like, Oh my God, do you guys want to go down to the pit? You can have our pit passes. Like, and we yeah. gave us pit passes, and we got to go down and watch his set from the pit. That's How awesome. nice is that? So I told him that story. So <laughs> <great. even> <laughs> <laughs> right. So I told him that story, and I was just like, I was just like that. He he said that's so nice. He was like, thank you so much for telling me that. I'm so proud of my parents. And then we walk upstairs, and we're all just small talking, like, oh, we're not about to just go see Tim McGraw right now, and. They're like, okay, walk in here. And they're like, we're going to have you guys walk in one by one. And we're like, okay. And my heart just starts being like, <laughs> I'm just like, what is happening? Like, and we walk in and there he is. The smiliest, mm-hmm. most welcoming, warm person I have ever seen in my entire life. And he's literally, <laughs> as a human, like perfect. Mm-hmm. His skin is perfect. His teeth are perfect. <laughs> he is, he's like zero percent body fat. He's just like <laughs> it looks like they made him in a test tube. Like he's just uh-huh. perfect. And on top of that, just the coolest guy. And <laughs> and just sharing so much tour wisdom with us. And uh, and then we actually got to sit down. They haven't released this yet. Or actually, I think they released Russell's. But we got to sit down and we got to sing for him. Mm-hmm. And so he was sitting here next to me, to my right. Russell was on his right and Brandon Davis was on my left. Mm. And he looks at me and he's like, AK, you want to start us off? What are you going to sing? And I was like, uh, I'm going to sing when you say nothing at all. And mm-hmm. he was like, he just start, he just pops up. It's amazing how you can speak. And I was like, what is happening? <laughs> like to hear his voice this far away from my face. I was like, this is crazy. And so I sang my song and he looked at me and he said, has anybody ever told you that you sound like Dolly Parton? And I said, <laughs> yes, yeah. it's oh, never meant no. more than it does right now. <laughs> yeah. There it was, was somebody else super special. Like recently on, we got to see them on social media that you got to sing for. And it's Randy Travis. Yes. And what was that to get a reaction from him singing Man. the song? Man, it was, it was really the same thing when I met Randy for the first time. It was very much like I was in, I have a video on my phone. I was like in an Uber, like videoing myself like this. Like my, I was breathing so hard and I was just like, oh my gosh, I'm about to go meet this legend in his home. And, uh, and as soon as I walked in, I tell everybody this all the time because it's, it's, it's so true. As soon as I walked in and I saw him, he has got such, he's got such an energy about him that I was instantly calm. That's mm-hmm. awesome. It, I, I wasn't, it was just, all my nerves were gone. He's just so, he's just got this energy that calmed yeah. me. And yeah. we clicked, like we'd known each other for years. And oh. we sang together and um, and yeah, we've I've gotten to hang out with them a couple of times, made, have made a lot of comment or content with them. I went to mm-hmm. the Country Music Hall of Fame. Randy walked me around 
and uh, showed me all of his all his trophies, and it was it was really really cool. Yeah. And he was, yeah. and I loved it too because he was testing your knowledge of his greatest hits. And the video that I saw, it, I just thought it was very, uh, very cool. Like you said, he's heartwarming and very much joyous to do this, and just his personality. Uh, but it's like nothing ever happened when you look back at him. Man, he just, just takes it with a grain of salt and moves on and lives life to the fullest. What was that like to go through the, the test of the knowledge of this one, this one, this one? Because there were so many greatest hits out there. So were you nervous that <laughs> like you were going to get wrong? Were you like? I know this, but like I'm put on the spot. <laughs> no, I'm I'm like a huge fan, so I was very confident. I knew them all. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Um, but I was afraid he was gonna throw one random like curveball in there of one I didn't know. Um, so yeah. I was scared about that. But but yeah, it that was really really fun. That was a fun day. And then you know I didn't really realize his reactions in the moment. And then when I watched the video back, it like makes me tear up Aww. because he's yes. just. He just sits there with such pride and like beans, mm -hmm. you know, you know, as I sing his songs back to him. And it's just, it's very, every moment I get to spend with him is very, very special. You know, you, you've done some really cool music videos in your time and, and I, I've watched them all. And I love the fact that you get to per, put your personal touch on the song, make it come to life, make people just really understand what music videos are all about and how they basically just kind of accentuate the song. What's been, I guess, over the last few years with so many great songs coming out for you and your camp, uh, what's been your favorite music video to put out to your fans? Um, well, you know, I got to work with Sophie Mueller, who is a mm -hmm. huge music video director, um, when I was shooting West Side. Mm -hmm. And Sophie's done, you know, Not Ready to Make Nice for the Dixie Chicks. She's done iconic music videos, um, you know, Selena Gomez and whatever the list goes on and on. But I wasn't aware that I was going to be shooting with her when I did my single, You Think You Know Someone, which I co-wrote with Shane McAnally and uh, Josh Osborne. And, um, and, you know, she pretty much sent us the treatment and we showed up there and, and I remember getting my makeup done and feeling like I didn't have enough makeup on my face. Like this is how green I was in that part of the business. And I mean, I was in the middle of shooting a Netflix TV show. So like I was also just like thrown into television that I had ne like I had never experienced in my life. Um, but getting to work with her and getting to see how things that made no sense to me made perfect sense to her. And then get me just like totally trusting her judgment and like going around and being like, this doesn't feel like it's going to work. And then watching it back and being like, Oh my God, she's a genius. And seeing the story. And 100%. Okay. Like yes. she's a genius. Even, even the makeup artist that she had on, on set that day. Like I remember feeling like I didn't like my makeup. I, I told my husband, I was like, I do not like my makeup. Like I had like some acne, like some hormonal acne on so, and I could see it. And I kept asking her, I was like, are you going to like cover this up or whatever? She, she was like, she was like, this makeup is, is for the lighting. And I was just like, okay. <laughs> and then I, I go back and I just looked beautiful. And I was like, you guys know exactly. It's just, it was a, a huge learning experience for me. One is my first time ever working with extras that were hired for me on a music video. And then getting to work with somebody who's like as incredible as Sophie Mueller on a video. One of my favorite songs that I've ever mm -hmm. written as well. Um, so I, you think, you know, someone was definitely my favorite. I, think. I, like that. I love it. And for those of you who don't know, sometimes music videos are filmed out of order. If it's a storyline, because it fits better for lighting or where, where the location is. So sometimes you can't always see it in the chronological order that it happens in the movie or in the mini movie music video. Yeah. Um, we were doing a lot of slow-mo stuff too. And so another thing that people don't, a lot of people don't know is that when you're doing slow-mo in a music video, the it's the backing, like the track, like the playback is actually Whoa. sped up. It's actually <laughs> sped up. It's in like double time. Yeah, that's so, okay. Yeah. So that when they play it back and and it's like your lips are moving, everything matches. It's very strange. Mm -hmm. But so you have to be like emoting. Like singing, like with full heart, but going, you think, you know, somebody's heart, somebody's heart, somebody's heart, somebody's heart, like that, but like still <laughs> keeping your face like you're in it. It's very strange, <laughs> but so cool when you watch it back. It's awesome. 
There was, uh, you know, one you put out, and I still got everything on the playlist. I can pull it up and talk music with you all day long. In fact, I can talk music with, with anybody these days. I love it. Yeah, I love Dive that. Bar Dreamer. Oh, you do. You do talk well, I, I know. I, I, you know, she's right. Yeah, six, seven days a week. That's what we do. That's what we do here on the show. So I guess somebody's got to do it, right? Somebody has to do it. Uh, Dive Bar Dreamer. I want to always ask you about that one. Forgot to in Nashville during the CRS event. But uh, another one I'm sure is special to you, and that, that one just – it got me, it took me on a, a hell of a ride and had to ask you about that one. Thank you. Dive Bar Dreamer is the song that I wrote right after I came back from being on The Voice. Mm -hmm. And I was getting phone calls. I had not gotten cast in Westside yet. I actually got the phone call to be on Westside like 30 days later. Mm -hmm. um, and then Dive Bar Dreamer ended up being a huge song on the show. Um, so it's very strange that I wrote that 30 days prior, not knowing that it was going to have such a life on this TV show. And I, um, I wrote it sitting on my front porch. I just got out of the shower. I had my hair in a towel and I was living back in Illinois still. And, um, I just came back from the voice and my friends, they weren't supposed to be, but they were calling me, <laughs> telling me <laughs> that they were, they were moving forward in the competition, right. As I had just gotten sent home. And so I was hearing that and wanting to be so happy for them, but also feeling like, I don't know what's going to happen with me next. Like, what, where do I go from here? Mm -hmm. So then I'm calling all the bars that, that, you know, employ me every Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, um, and let me play four hour sets. So I'm calling all the bars back and I'm begging them for slots because most of the time they're full, you know, you have to book three months in advance. Mm -hmm. You can't just call, call the places that you were playing and be like, Hey, uh, I got eliminated early from the show. Can I please play this Friday night? And they're like, we're booked for two months, three months. Yeah. So I have no money. I'm completely broke. Uh, I am trying to get my job back bartending at this point, And I'm trying to get all my gigs back. And I sit on my porch and I think about my Opry debut, which I haven't made yet, but I'm very close. I'm very close. I can feel it. Um, <laughs> it's going to happen soon. <laughs> uh, I'm manifesting it. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, uh, but, you know, I think about like when I make my Opry debut and, and, and what that's going to feel like. And then this, this kind of like music video plays in my head. And then I start thinking of the words, you know, I turn my face towards the light for a little while, hoping to soak it in, thinking maybe it'll ignite the fire that burned out from the constant rejection. You're good, but she's better. Just keep, keep it on. And, and so I wrote that first verse and then I wrote, you know, the chorus to Dive Bar Dreamer and, and then brought it to the show when I got there, it was just kind of like a, Hey, I wrote this. Can I like, maybe you'll like it. You probably won't, you know, like that was literally it. Like as we're sitting here thinking what song is going to be your song on the show. And I was like, it was a very passive thought. I was like, mm -hmm. hey, you know, I, I was like sitting on my porch one day and I wrote this and let me just show it to you, you know, feel, tell me you hate it, yeah, you know? And they were like, no, yes, wow, we love it. That's your song. And I got to sing it over and over and over and it became this mantra for me. It became this song that I can go back to every single time I'm feeling insignificant. Mm -hmm. I can step back into that dive bar dreamer mindset and think about, oh my God, everything I've been through in the last 12 years to get to where I am now, yeah. you know? And so it's a very special song to me. Yes. That's, a, that's one of my favorites, no doubt. Well, I do want to run down some of the dates. Uh, April 29th, it starts off in Rogers, Arkansas, and it's going to be Alexandra Kay, Russell Dickerson, Brandon Davis, and Tim McGraw. A, a fantastic tour. I know some people have got some tickets. April 30th, they're going to be in St. Louis. And then, of course, uh, coming up there, uh, May the 5th, Jacksonville, May 6th in Tampa, May 7th, West Palm Beach, one of my favorite places to go visit, no doubt. So that's always a good thing. And, I will not uh, be in West Palm Beach. Oh, okay, show. not West Palm. Just to anybody who's, just to anybody who's listening, I will not be at the West Palm Beach show. <laughs> my, the, uh, my best friend is getting married that day. So I have, to, so I have to fly out from Tampa that day, and I am in her wedding. So that is the one show that I'm that I'm. Yeah. <laughs> but the rest, I will be there. And for the rest of those awesome. dates, uh, alexandriakofficial.com, if I got that correct, the for the website, which is good out there on the road. I know there's some uh, there's some Canadian dates. So we talked about a little bit before the show that are 
right up against it coming up. You're going to be a busy, busy traveler and playing all those fantastic songs that we've talked about uh, for the fans. And that's what it's about is, is uh, the fans, no doubt. All right, I'm going to throw a little wrinkle in here because I'm going to let you lead off Rapid Fire. This is the Kirstie Krause edition Perfect. of Rapid Fire today, which is good. We've done so far with you. We have. Yes. We have. Yes, I love Rapid Fire. <laughs> yes, okay. So since it is Earth Day, we were talking about this right before we went live. What would be the ideal Earth Day activities for you? Planting, planting, planting flowers or plants, tending a garden. You know, that's one thing that really is a bummer for me about being on the road is I cannot keep anything alive. (laughs) (laughs) And I, and I love to be a plant mom. And then I come home and I'm like, dang it. Another one bites the dust. Yeah. Um, but, (laughs) But, uh, but yeah, I would spend all day outside planting flowers and planting vegetables in a garden. That's what I I do. I I do. And and now the spring weather, I'm going to help my wife uh, do that too. That's always a good time to get outside. (laughs) It's a beautiful day for it. I'll tell you that. It's turned into that 80 degrees, not a cloud in the sky. Beautiful. The weekend's supposed to be good too. And I got a story to share with you too, because one of the cool things about doing what we do here is we get those perks of like upgraded seats at a show or pit passes or whatever. So, I was going to ask you about that, just kind of on the wing and a prayer at a concert. Had that ever happened before? Because what happened to me a couple of days ago was I had tickets to go to a ball game this weekend to go see the Astros play ball. Mm-hmm. One of my buddies was on a show the other day. He goes, hey, you know, my wife and I have tickets. I'm like, well, I don't mean to, to 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 be that way. You know, just I, that's cool. You see the tickets, whatever. He goes, no, man, I'm going to put you eight rows behind home plate and I'm going to give you free parking. I went. Okay, that's an upgrade. I had to turn it down. So my tickets, I sold off, you know, whatever, blah, blah, blah. So I took those. But had that ever happened at a concert before for you until that day with pit passes? I mean, you'd been surprised. Hell, we had fun at the Brooklyn Bowl, the Dustin Lynch show. And that was about as close as you can get to. Yeah, we were all dancing. From what I remember, we were jamming. (laughs) Oh, man. Anything impromptu like that ever happened before where you were like, I just can't believe that in this business, sometimes you do get some perks that just are like mind-blowing? To be honest, it happens a lot. <laughs> I don't remember the last time that I paid to go to a show. Yeah. I love it. And that is the biggest perk. My and, and that's not like I'm not trying to be, you know, braggadocious yeah. when I say that. I'm just saying like every well, you know what? Okay, let me say this. This was this was incredible. And this happened. Um, and this is just you know, based on my agent, my agent knows, will know somebody Mm -hmm. or my manager who is the same person. She'll know somebody, um, and, or her bosses or somebody that I know that's friends. Like Julia Cole just texted me when I was home the other day and was like, Hey girl, do you and Indy want to take these extra two tickets to Garth Brooks? I was like, I am obsessed with Garth Brooks. (laughs) Yes. That is Uh, someone I have paid for every single ticket I've ever seen. I got a message. I got a message too, and I was in Wisconsin, and I was like, "No!" I could have cried. I could have <laughs> cried. I looked at him, and I was like, "Shooting content for that's what love is at home." And but we were home for Easter, you know, as a family. Yeah. yeah. She's yeah. like, yeah. and she was like, "There'll be more." I'm like, "Please, <laughs> Please. yeah, more cards." <laughs> um, but you know, I was I was sitting in. I took my husband to Las Vegas for for Valentine's Day. Oh wow! Um, and I was there shooting content as well. I was well, I was there for work. But mm-hmm. I took him and did a bunch of special things for him as, as a part of the trip for Valentine's Day. Awesome. And so um, I was there to uh, do some behind the scenes content for uh, Shania Twain's Vegas residency. And so I already had tickets to the Shania Twain show because that's why I was there. And then that, that first night we were there, we were sitting at um, lunch and I looked over and it said straight to Vegas. The George Street show was mm-hmm. in Vegas. And I had never seen George live. No, I had seen him one other time years ago. Mm-hmm. And so I looked at him and I said, wouldn't it be crazy if Beth knew somebody that could get us into the show tonight? <laughs> Just that I, we're sitting there on a rooftop and I see that billboard. I was like, I've got to try. Like, I've got to see, you know. And so she she texts me and she's like, I'm sorry. You know, there's nothing that I can do um, because it's it's completely sold out. And it's so tonight. Yeah. Out. And I was just like, Oh, all good girl. Like n- no big deal. You know, I just want to check. So she texts me like a couple hours later and she was like, Hey, so 
my girl from wherever it was, Live Nation or AG, I'm not sure. And she was like, she was like, hey, I can do a buyout. There's two seats and they are front row. And she gave us these seats for a very cheap price <laughs> for the best seats in the house. I'm not kidding you when I tell you we had the best seats in the arena. It was like a corner stage. She does the four corner stage mm -hmm. and he'll switch every two songs. And we were on one of those corners. That's awesome. <laughs> right here. Just like, oh my God, it was crazy. So that was probably the craziest thing, like perk that like anybody's ever gotten. And I paid for them, but I mean, everybody around me had like Gucci purses and like, I mean, we didn't have that. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I love it. That's good stuff. What you got? I love that. They were all looking at us with my like knockoff handbag, being like, "How did y'all get up here?" Let's get up here. That is hilarious. Oh yeah. Okay. <laughs> That's good stuff. I love that. All right, my rapid fire question is: What is your favorite go to place to eat in Nashville? Um, for dinner, if that helps narrow down. Man, that's tough. Um, or it could be a brunch spot. Or okay, this is gonna sound super touristy of me, <laughs> but I love Hattie B's. Hattie B's, yep. I yep. love it. I do, and maybe it's because I've only permanently been in Nashville for. I've been commuting back and forth for like three years, but I've only permanently been in Nashville for like five months. Mm -hmm. So like. There's a couple of other spots that, to be honest, I don't remember the name of right now off the top of my head. And I'm like, oh, eat there and it's nice. And it's good. There's also a, a really great vegan bakery um, called the Sunflower Bakehouse. That's Ooh, right wow. by my house that I get takeout from all the time. It's so good. You would not even know that you're not eating real cheese. It's so good. <laughs> Love it. Love it. Well, you took me to that place we were there and I, I'm still going to give it props, man, because it was some of the best part. It put Texas barbecue to shame it yeah, was martin's. martin's martin's was martin's and i didn't even, i didn't get to he peg like corporate martin's. but Down on holy Third crap Street. like yeah okay well i'm gonna keep that in mind because my husband loves barbecue so <laughs> yes i mean if people well texas is known for its barbecue and i say yeah depending on where you go maybe out to west texas toward like san antonio and out that way to lubbock but between and no knock on restaurants i'm sorry but nothing around my neck of the woods that compares right. to, <laughs> to martin's that was at that point in time but that's, okay i'll have to try it yeah, and I didn't get to Peg Lake Porker and some of the other. There was two or three places they talked about. So that's uh, – now, let me ask you this. When you're having the night in and it's just you and the husband, mm -hmm. is it pizza and a glass of wine? If so – I love this question because Kirstie came up with this. What what kind of toppings go on the pizza, and what type of wine do you guys kind of, kind of drink together? Well, we're not wine drinkers. We okay. are both beer drinkers. Okay. So right. I um, – so, okay, I, I mean, I can give you my exact – we are both creatures of habit. Okay. Very, we are very much, we find what we like and it stays the exact same. It, and we're very mm -hmm. alike in that way. So um, our Pizza Hut order is we get a large, <laughs> it's always, always Pizza Hut. Um, we get a large thin crust pepperoni pizza with extra pepperonis. And whenever they used to do like the crust flavor, mm -hmm. we would get the hut, the uh, hut favorite crust. And then we would get our pizza well done. And then we get boneless buffalo wings mm -hmm. and we get breadsticks oh yeah oh, wow. and <laughs> Those things are good. that's it it's that's it and then every once in a while we'll like get a cookie or something you know but like <laughs> that's our pizza order he drinks uh hazy ipa is his favorite it's like he's on a hazy ipa cake right now and uh i'm a miller light bush light there you go nice yeah Sounds like somebody else I know. Miller Light out there because she's a Miller Light girl. She's she's something else. I got, I got to see her in Nashville too. Uh, Ashton Shepard, and she's a Miller Light gal out there. She's been. Oh yeah. <laughs> she, she, gave, <laughs> she loves that beer, girl. What yeah. you got, Kirsty? We'll do we'll do one final one. What you got? Oh, one more. I didn't know if you were gonna ask. So <laughs> I guess I'm gonna keep to kind of themes for holidays. Uh, on Valentine's Day, are you like get me flowers and chocolate, or are you like just a card? Let's just go out. Like what? What's kind of like the un, the expectations that are unspoken that you would like to have from your hubby on Valentine's Day? I, we do this for pretty much every holiday. 
we cook ourselves. Mm. Um, like if we're not home with everybody else, we will cook ourselves. We always, we usually have steak on Valentine's day. We'll make steaks at the house and we have potato, mashed potatoes, and we have asparagus. And like I said, we're <laughs> creatures of habitual. Yes. We've been together for 10 years. Wow. In July. Wow. July is our 10 year anniversary of starting to date. And we moved in together three months in. We got our first apartment, little bitty apartment. Um, and our first Valentine's Day, we had steak and mashed potatoes and asparagus. And we have done it every year for 10 years. Um, wow. So that's what, that's what we do. And, and it's, it's just for me, I'm a very, very um, traditions. Yeah, traditional person, but also it's very much about the the connection for me. So like I want to I just want to sit down and I want to talk mm -hmm. and hang out and play a board game and like have that time to emotionally connect with you because we so much we we're it's very very like hey babe, you know, I'm I'm in rehearsal right now. What's up? Are you okay? Everything cool? Okay, love you. Call you later. It's very much or if I'm on the road, it's quick conversations. And so when we get the time to really sit down and to, to talk and spend time together, it's like the best thing in the world. So that's all I ever want to do. You know, I love it. And there is no doubt you are a very busy woman. Alexandria K here on the backstage pass. We're so appreciative to have you back on the show, celebrating all this music, celebrating the tour that you were on. We have a lot of people commenting, hoping mm -hmm. to see you in different parts of the States. So it's super excited. We're, we're very excited for you and we are huge fans over here. Yep. Oh, I love and, you guys. And oh my gosh. We, you know, you're uh, one of our favorites here. And, and I, I do have to put out there best worst X. If you guys haven't checked it out is across oh, all the streaming yes. platforms, go grab that. I know there's more coming. Uh, this big tour with Tim McGraw starts uh, April 29th in Rogers, Arkansas. Then next night in St. Louis, uh, Alexandra K official.com for the dates and everything out there. Uh, go grab some merch while you're at it. Uh, and then the cool thing is you'll have to come on after the tour and tell us how everything went. And of course, new music will probably be encapsulated with that too, right? I mean, I imagine that's yeah. That's I would love to. I'd love to come back and check in. I'm I am over the moon for what is coming. Like I said, I've mm -hmm. I've never played on an amphitheater stage. It's my first. I, the, the biggest crowd I've ever played for is seven thousand people. So yeah, um, yeah. These hold twenty two thousand people. Whoa. So it's much, it's much bigger than anything I've ever done in it. And I can't tell you how excited I am. Oh, but by the no time doubt. that I come back and I check in with you guys, um, I have a new single that comes out next week in literally a week. It's called That's What Love Is. Um, it's a song that I wrote for my husband for our wedding day. And you guys can pre-save it now. It's literally, the link is literally all over my Facebook, all over my TikTok. Um, and then by the time I check back in after the tour, my second single from my my album will be out mm -hmm. and then uh you know my album comes out in October. So I'm like okay. information okay. where I'm like, should I say this? I don't know. Yay. It reminds me of so the, exciting. that uh, old Jefferson's TV show. I used to watch the Jeffersons when I was growing up, moving on up. And she's moving on up. That's what she's doing. <laughs> <laughs> In country music too. I love this comment. So Linda, I'll take this one as one last comment. So that's uh, that's a good one there. Belleville, Wisconsin. I forget Belleville, Wisconsin. You have to try Johnny yeah. O's pizza. <clears throat> Awesome. It'll be Pizza Hut. It'll put Pizza Hut to shame. <laughs> it's awesome. We saved everyone. I have a wonderful, beautiful, blessed night. Thank you for being here, Linda. I'll try it out whenever I come to Wisconsin. I think I'll I love that. There. I'll love it too. It's good stuff. Well, I tell you what, again, best worst X, the tour with Tim McGraw. She's moving on up with a new single next week. Go pre save it across all the uh, social media out there. Uh, we always appreciate your time and know your busy schedule. Tell the husband we said hello. And definitely it was great to catch up with you in uh, music city back at crs no doubt love seeing you yes. thank you guys so much always a pleasure and i can't wait to catch up with you whenever i come back looking forward to it the one and only ak alexander k here on the backstage pass thanks to the sponsors we'll see you guys monday with pete agnew from the band nazareth the scottish rock band remember that song love hurts everybody knows that song yeah they brought it to light back in the 70s 80s and yeah nazareth is going to join us pete agnew here on the backstage pass more to come over the next few weeks for Kirsty and the entire team We'll talk to you guys later. Have a great weekend and go Astros this weekend while I'm there. Please win a ball game on Sunday. Please. Let's do that. Uh, we'll talk to you guys soon. Have a great